Hello and welcome to Pursuit of Perfect System. My name's Terry Ellis, I'm an audio reviewer and a direct live calibrator. And I'm gonna start the video by apologizing for the lack of videos over the last week or so. That's because I've been involved in a big project in my main listening room, which has been sucking up all my time and I've not been able to put the time into that and into the video creation side of things, but there's gonna be a hell of a lot of videos coming soon about that project and other things. What I did do before I started that project was do some recording sessions in there, some sound recording sessions. And that is what's led me to this video. And in this video, I'm gonna mess with your head. But in order to create a great context for this video, I'm gonna throw you straight into an AB demonstration. For you, it's gonna be a completely blind AB demonstration with the exception of the image that's up on the screen which shows you the system that I used to create these AB demonstrations a very, very highly resolving one. So have a listen, have a listen to system A, have a listen to system B, and I'll come back and talk to you about them in a second. Secrets you keep from me Will I ever love The secrets you keep from me Will I ever love The secrets you keep from me Will I ever love Secrets you keep from me Will I ever know Tonight So what did you think of that? That's a really interesting one, isn't it? It's quite clearly differences between system A and system B. I would say system A is fuller, more rounded, possibly a little bit richer sounding, whereas B is much clearer, much cleaner, much more open sounding. Really quite obvious and distinct differences between system A and system B. This is the bit that's gonna mess with your noodle. Digital audio. Ones and zeros. I think you'll find audio files that fall into two different camps here. You've got the audio files that think digital is digital, it's just a digital signal, nothing can affect it. And then there's the other audio files that think the digital chain is just as important as an analog chain. And you need to pay special care and attention to the digital chain just like you do analog. And I doubt you'll find many audio files that sit in the middle. I think you're either in one camp 
or the other. Now, I've always been in the camp that pays special care and attention to digital audio. And I appreciate this whole area of digital audio can be a bit of a minefield. You know, you mentioned something like a USB cable on a hi-fi forum and you can expect an onslaught and a barrage of comments like, well, you know, a high-end USB cable doesn't make my printer print any better, which I always find really quite an amusing one. That's kind of the context and the reason for this video. So system A, system B, very, very clear and obvious differences, wasn't there, between A and B. And if you don't remember, let's quickly run the A, B again. Well, Yeah, so very, very clear and obvious differences between A and B. So what was the difference between A and B? Now, in the modern hi-fi world, I would assume that anybody that's streaming audio, or anybody that's using some sort of streamer or, or similar type of hi-fi component, whether it be an actual dedicated hi-fi component or whether it's a, a computer that they're using to play their music back from, they're probably gonna be using either one of these or one of these, which is a smartphone or a tablet or some sort of smart device as a modern day remote control. And there are loads and loads of different remote control apps that you can either buy or that you get for free or that come with and included with or made by the manufacturers of the hi-fi streamers and bits of kit that you've bought. What are these remote controls? Well, they're, they're essentially exactly that. They're a remote control that uses the network side of things. So they use the network to control your streamer or control your computer or to control it, the hi-fi component that you're using. And you use them and you'll pick the album that you want to listen to or you'll create a track list or you put them on random or whatever the functions are that you want to use. But for me, using one of these remote controls has been the biggest revelation or biggest musical playback revelation that I've experienced in my lifetime. The fact that I can sit in my chair pick the different songs that I want to listen to, create a playlist that I want to listen to, flick between all the albums that I own and listen to. And obviously if you're a Tidal or a Cobars or a, a Spotify streamer, then you're going to completely rely on one of these to access the library, access the cloud-based music that you listen to. So this remote control and the interface and everything becomes a vital and key and critical part of the hi-fi experience and chain. But can that remote control affect the sound quality of your system. Now, <laughs> up until recently, I would have said there's absolutely no chance ha you know, this remote control is gonna affect the sound quality of a system. Now, I can't speak for every system in existence. I can only speak for the experience that I've had with the audio PC that I've built. For a long time now, I've been using an app called Bubble DS Next because it's an Android-based uh, app. I use it on my phone. My phone's the most powerful smart device that I own. This is a Galaxy S9 Plus. It just works really, really fast and really slick. So I've been using Bubble DS Next for probably about 18 months, two years. I think it cost about five pounds. And it's not been a perfect app. It's got a few bugs and stuff. And, you know, but it's been reliable and it's been a good experience to use. Now, just recently, someone who uh, has given me a hell of a lot of advice in the audio PC world side of things recommended a new remote control app that had just been released for Android moving across from purely an Apple device. And I gave that a try because I wanted to see what the user experience would be like on that. Now, what I was not expecting was for there to be such a distinct and obvious sonic difference in the playback of my review system and the system that you saw in the photo during the AB demonstration, that is what you was listening to. The difference between A and B, remote app A and remote app B, both on my phone. So I was able to, on the same day, at the same time, load up both apps on my phone, press play on one, record. I then stopped it, opened up the other app, press play, 
and recorded it. So I didn't touch the speakers, I didn't touch the amplifier, I didn't touch the microphone. They was recorded literally back to back on the same day, at the same time, at the same volume, at the same recording volume. Everything was set exactly the same. And yeah, the sonic difference between the remote app A and remote app B is really clear and really obvious to the point I was able to record that difference. The purpose of this video was just to point out that over network based audio, which is becoming bigger and bigger and more popular, and people are streaming, you know, using streaming solutions, Tidal, Spotify, Cobuzz, more and more and more. That's obviously the way the industry is going. Well, and digital audio is a funny one, and this is the exact reason why I'm in the camp of everything's important you need to pay attention to everything because even the remote control app that you use on your smart device has an impact on the sound quality now there could be some post processing or something going on behind the scenes of both these different apps but i really don't think it's anything to do with that it must be something to do with network and the way the network works and how that controls things i really don't know this one's completely messed with my head digital audio is an interesting one network audio is another really really interesting one and what is network audio network audio is digital audio and bearing in mind when i say i'm using this as a remote I literally mean, so the music's not stored on the phone, it's nothing to do with how it grabs this music from the phone, send it over Wi-Fi or Bluetooth, or whatever, there's none of that involved. All this is doing is telling the computer what to do the same as a remote control. And that's the bit that's really, really got my head in a bit of a spin and in a bit of a twist. But, you know, that's one of the great things about computer audio, it's one of the great things about audio in general, is that there's lots of real extreme enthusiasts that really want to push and push and push for better audio quality all the time and they find and discover these things right so i hope you enjoyed this video bit of an unusual one even for me and i hope you've got something out of this video i hope it's an interesting one i hope it's an enjoyable one if it is make sure you leave us a thumbs up make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't already as i say because there's going to be a hell of a lot of really interesting videos coming soon make sure to go and visit the website there's been a lot of development work going on that recently as well so go and check that out let me know what your thoughts are and i'll be seeing you soon take care